Hi, welcome back um, to Changing Pace. As you can see, this is a slideshow of when we had the boat fabricated because as Dave previously mentioned, we couldn't find a boat within our price range. Yeah, so the plans are bought, we made a few alterations and uh, the company very generously endorsed all them alterations. I mean, it was a lot of hard work and Dave worked a full time job and then we did this on the side and we were very lucky to be able to put the finished shell and it was only a shell, it didn't have windows at the time outside his work. Where did you get the windows from mate? Uh, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean it came together slowly. The, the shell was primed then blight and then painted as you can see now with a, a two pack uh, blue paint which lasted quite a long time. I did actually want it a bit darker, but I don't think he was able to do it darker, so we ended up with this blue. That she looks good, don't she? She does. And it just so happens that we're taking her out of the water in a week's time to get her blackened again. After the boat was painted, we then fitted uh, the engine to it, which was a 2.5 litre BMC old taxi engine um, my friend helped me fit it there is chris and then um, we had a, a propeller specially made from crowders to suit the length of the boat and the engine which you can see there the pace of the build actually picked up at this point because i was informed by the company i worked for that they were relocating so we really had to pull some long hours to get the boat ready for a boat safety certificate and to get it watertight um, because I had about six weeks to get the boat moved and put in the water. Um, but we managed it with some long hours. Louise didn't see much of me. But... Uh, Eventually we got there, the boat was water tight, all the electrics to the engine were connected and we were ready to crane her in. Um, so I didn't really see Dave for maybe a month, night time. I mean he'd come home, eat, go to bed, go to work. I mean he worked really, really hard. My heart was in my mouth. I absolutely thought they were going to drop this. And he'd work ever so hard on it and I was really nervous and jittery. He really wanted to be involved as well, didn't you? Yeah. Climbing all over. Changing pace. Did she have her name yet? Yeah. Or was she unnamed? No, she named her. And I think the crane and the lorry cost how much? Five hundred quid from a Was it? Was that a deal? Yeah, a good deal. Half day I heard of crane and lorry from a company in Tuxford. Yeah. Works up. Yeah. Walkers. <laughs> oh god, I was really nervous. We followed this on the motorway. I just had visions of them going over a bump and it just falling off or round a roundabout. I was so anxious. Uh, we actually put her in on the Chesterfield. Uh, I, where, what lock was it near? Forest in... Locks. Forest this Locks. Is a forest Locks on the Chesterfield just outside Redford. So time was ticking on, she was heading for the Chesterfield, it was a miserable day, uh, she was meant to be going in in the morning, it ended up being the afternoon, time was ticking on and on. When we got to the Chesterfield, uh, some, I think they were called British Waterways at the time, now Canal and River Trust were there, and there was a big debate as to whether she would go in or not even though we'd previously submitted our paperwork. So anyway, the, oh, the crane manager had to come out, somebody from British Waterways came out, and there was a bit of a hoo-ha. She eventually, after much swearing, did end up going in. 
Uh, she has been black since then at Burton Waters, but we didn't actually see her. No, were you going to mention the fact that I blew up the engine? And... No, I wasn't going to oh, mention okay. that, but there she is, swinging in midair again. Don't drop the it. Water. And she, she floated. <laughs> so we were actually mooring at Shire Oaks and we set off and the engine cut out. So we ended up towing her by hand for a short time and then Dave fixed the engine. Uh, again, we lost more light, more time. Uh, we kind of limped in. We didn't have a front headlight at this point. Uh, and it just got darker and darker and darker. And it was freezing, absolutely freezing. Rubbish and in weather. mind, this is late October. And that's pretty much the story. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, our trip down memory lane.